Okay, so welcome back to Triplicate and this is my Yamaha DX11 which I bought new in 88, possibly 89 and used for quite a lot of years and then uh, got pulled in a cupboard and other things got put in the same cupboard and some of the keys got broken so I eventually took it apart and ordered some more keys which fortunately are readily available and not particularly dear but didn't actually get round to finishing the repair and it's been gathering dust lots of dust for a number of years now so now is the time it's got to go it's got to find a new home somebody who cares for it so we are going to try and actually repair it all and get it up and running and sell it as a working machine or if not it'll get sold as a spare or repair machine and as you can see it's gathered a lot of dust so I am going to try and give it some kind of an initial clean and then we will get into taking it apart so that's a bit better mostly clean it seems to be screwed together so should we turn it over and see what we have for screws that one that's not in there right it appears we have a back panel which comes off so shall we take that off Right, here we have the screws, I think it's a weird angle. And we'll take all these that are holding lots of clothes on. Yes, no? No. Probably. I'll just And I realise, that's what we see, it's my arm. So that's the bottom off. Brought that over there. So let us turn it back over and look at what we need to do to replace the keys and what keys we've got to replace them with. Plastic thing in it comes out the bottom. A load more dust. Ooh. So I think we need this metal chassis separated from the front panel. Okay, I've got you back up the stick. Sort of a compromise between being able to see uh, everything get the whole machine in and actually see what I'm doing so currently we've got some of the machine in and we're going to go for being able to see what I'm doing now I think we need to undo that one, that one there is another one the other end that way that you can't see there's one there and I'm guessing well there'll be at least one under there and we need to take these off and pull the main board out of the way 
and then I guess the keyboard will just slide out. Does this sound like a plan? Hmm, let's go for it anyway. Don't mingle. I need to go find that screwdriver. Nickel screws. Pop the screws and something loses them. Okay, in the back here, what have we got? Some kind of that cartridge thing. What sort of cartridge you can hit? Who knows? Guess you can't get them anymore. So full. Just gonna come up. Yep. <gasps> Lots of wires. Lots more dust. Right. So, with the main board hanging off somewhat precariously. What's that? Some kind of a... I don't know. Right. Let's get these last two screws out. And very possibly. You should be. I've asked these screws. I've another one. Yeah. They love you. Is that going off? Yep. This doesn't screw it back together. It's going to together, does Right. So now, <laughs> shuffle along, and the other end, these screws. So just look under. Yeah, these screws, and there's another one under there. So. And this one here. And... Oh, to come out. Looks like I'm going to have to pull this, which is the power supply board, I'm guessing they the chunky big tracks. In fact it says plus 15 volts on there and plus for minus 15 volts. Wow. Is that going to come away at that? And then there's two slots here now, is this, oh. Right, so all these I could have left in, because this is just a... Well, maybe I need to take this out anyway. And there we have a keyboard. Okay, so we managed to locate all the, the keys that came out of it. So we have those two white ones, which are good. These two white ones, which are good. And these two black ones, there and there, both of which those are snapped off at the back there. I'm guessing while it was in a cupboard something was knocked into it and they just broke. So instead of those we want two, I've got three, I don't know why, of these. And These have a spring. Which is what gives them the bounce. And let me demonstrate with one of the black ones. Take these out. There. Okay, these down here. Are the switches for the key. It 
to just rubber carbonized rubber pads which uh, short across some fingers on a printed circuit board below and I'll take black ones uh, you see this so uh, that uh, <coughs> that switch is one of those switches and that switch is the other and you see the different heights so the switches as you push the key down the switches will make one after the other and the time between those is where it gets how it calculates the key velocity clever huh so should we see if we can get some keys back in okay so um, the memory card filled up on the camera so I lost a bit of mostly me humming and hearing so it's not a problem and I also had a bit of a fight trying to work out how these keys go on uh, mostly caused by putting the key in the wrong place despite the fact they're labelled on the end as to what goes where so I don't think that one's in take that one out um, so here's how we do it firstly the spring goes bowed in with the long slot at the key end we a put that up there and b persuade the camera to focus uh, so then we have to make sure this thing is out of the way which it is this goes along the back and put that in when we're done so we now need a black key to go in here will work downwards that's right so that's the spring in so now we hook oh, you can't see it's the black one but the slots there are uh, what well, that hook goes in and we get those in first and of course I've put this key in and we can't that is why you have to take the white key out to get the black key in so disassembly the opposite order I'm out Go in with it like that. Yes, I left that out of the way. Oh, let's come out now. So, so that, what we will do is we push that back, that up, push it back, and it goes in. Similarly. The white one, hook the bottom in, lift it up, push it back, and oh no, that has to go through that down into the hole there, and then we can push it back and it clicks in. So now G, B, we want A, don't get it wrong. So we hook the hooks in, push it back, and it hooks in straight. When you know how to do it, it's dead easy. So that is E, no, C and E, B and E. It's got the spring in. So that one, we should be able to go in. There, yep. We get that through the hole, we push it, we go backwards, come on. And it goes, and then before we put this white one in, so we pull the black one in. Uh, we slide with those. Yep, that's it. There we go. Didn't have a shot, of course. I'm going to call this line again. Oh, easy when you know. Just going to take it out. Okay. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Down, 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 back. So, this should be D. The dog. And C, if we can. No. 
Right, so final job is to shove that rubber bit in there and do a quick. Well, they all feel okay. And what I sort of also was going to do is just hang him. Let's just have a look at this. PCB. There we go. A cutting edge 80s technology. Lots of through the whole chips. Let's get it put back together. Right. Uh, I think I am going to leave you up there and try and move backwards and forwards so you can see what I'm doing. First thing I think. going to do just to see is see if, if there is any voltage left in this battery okay so had the meter where you couldn't read it of course but there was no voltage across the battery which not surprising after 32 years or whatever and Yamaha in their infinite wisdom have soldered the battery on so it's a throwaway synthesizer. When the battery goes flat, you throw the synthesizer away. However, um, it's a standard sized battery and you can glue on a battery holder or something according to what people have done. Looking on Google. However, what I shall do for now, is I'm gonna screw it back together because we only have to pull the main board off to get at the battery. So I shall screw the rest back together and if it all works I shall replace the battery and it'll get sold as a working synthesizer. If there's something that doesn't work uh, and I can't fix it easily then it'll get sold as spares and repair with the dead battery in. So shall we... Oh crash! Uh, put it back together. Possibly with me having to stop and look at yesterday's video to see where everything goes. Okay, onward and upward. So, that's how it starts. I'm gonna go. I must drop in. I'm gonna stop. Like that. Okay. Listen up. Just remove that. Oh, it's just a bag holder. Put it all together. One there. One there, which I think I'll be able to have on it. Come on. No, you won't do it. 
comes to drive. Which at least I definitely have. There, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I think so. These are the big ones. I think I should go there. Okay, so we've got these four in, these two are the lid screws, or the base screws, so we don't need to put those in. So, it is time to put the main board and the power supply board back where they belong. And to which end I've got myself a tool to make it a bit easier. Okay, let's get some connectors on and these I'm happy to say, can we see that, are different lengths So the long one doesn't go in there So it must go in there in there okay so these two I'm not a fan of these things screens the screens there's nothing in there no connectors they're just screens okay these little things the outsides lift up and then you just slide it in and push the outside down and it clamps very clever so we're going to take some deoxid d5 and squirt some into these pots for the modern pitch pen wheels because i suspect they might have got a bit of dust in over the years and we're going to spin her over and plug her in. Ah! Oh no! That's not good. So first we're going to deal with that issue. Ah. Okay, so that wire that had got stuck through there was the connection to the modulation wheel and pitch pen. So I took it all apart needed to pull the keyboard right up to get that off put it all back together should we see what she does I have to say at this point I'm getting a little fed up we're working on something that I haven't used in maybe 20 years so, uh, let 
Main switch off. Turn the power on there. Turn the power on here. Hold your breath. Oh, the display is doing something. Saying Yamaha, how are you? Master tune. Okay. Well, that works. Uh, possibly full of rubbish due to the battery being dead, so we will attempt a factory reset. Edit 16 and 32. Edit 16 and 32. Release. No. Okay, did a factory reset, hoping that it would then work fine all the time the power was connected and obviously lose everything again when the power is disconnected only the trouble is it comes up with change RAM battery I'm looking at the screen here and I don't know whether you can actually see that shall we there you go there's an old LCD and they weren't so good at the angle in those days. So, I thought about using a power supply or something to put 3 volts on it, but I found in my drawer of batteries, well, wrong way as ever, a battery, a 2032 battery. So what I'm going to do, because these are dirt cheap, is solder this one on, because I don't have a battery holder, and then we will try again. Okay, let's get this old battery out. Oh, there it is, in all its glory. Okay, it's in. It ain't pretty, but it's in. So, shall we put the board back on, flip her over, and see if we can get it to go now. Okay, hopefully, from this angle, you'll be able to see the, you'll be able to see the display when I fire her up, so power up. Yep, I'm fine. Aha! Master Tune, Utility Mode. Single, right. So let us again attempt to do a factory reset, which I believe is edit 16 and 32. Yeah, that looks good. Utility manual text test entry dunno ram check okay okay it says power off and on again and see what happens Nope. Okay, I shall look again to how you do these factory reset test procedure and we'll have another go. D 
did a bit of digging around and what I believe happens is if you do what they say is a factory reset it does do a factory reset and then goes into this test mode and I think what happens um, from looking around on the internet is when it factory resets it doesn't put anything in the internal voice memory or the performance memory so they both come in being garbage I guess in the factory they used to load it sort of some default uh, programs in from the system exclusive so I'm gonna leave it for that for now so if we fire her up up she comes and this is internal 01 which I programmed last night so it's remembered it overnight uh, and it's different because I put an X in the name and she works so now we've just got to run through and test what we can um, and I am working around the camera which is a bit awkward so should we try the pitch bend wheel Modulation. Doesn't do a right lot. And the volume. Hmm, that's a bit crackly. Should we try and get our magic deoxid spray out? Put some in the the sockets at the back and get some of this in here. Okay. That seems to have done the trick. So we'll do similar on the data entry. Run that up and down a few times. Uh, if we go into utility, master tune. seems to work yep happy with that um, so let's try all the buttons now if I go into uh, single so if I go into edit and it's already in name so yeah the cursor works how about that works we know the edit works store to one uh, Right, hang on, mem protect off in single store to one and it's done it so the store works. We know the utility in the mem protect works performance. Yep, as I said, we get garbage. internal it's in cartridge it says insert cartridge don't have a cartridge can't test that there we go so we now need to test all these buttons so we shall Okay, and on to MIDI. So I have those two connected to the in and out on the com on the MIDI interface on the computer, and I have Ableton Live running. And I discover Camtasia and Ableton Live don't like running at the same time, so it's camera at the screen time. 
So let us uh, record some MIDI into a clip. That'll do. So there it is. It's recorded it all and we've got various velocities. I've played it all at the same velocity ish. So there we go, the velocity is working. And if we now play it back. All oh, right, so in and out are working through. Right, what we need for through, the only way I can test through is by this connecting to, to this little MIDI test jig because I don't have anything else to plug MIDI into. So Pikachu fires itself up. Uh, looking good so far, so I need to go back into live. happening out of the through port so if I stop that no MIDI so the through is working as well good okay so that is it it all works all the bits I can test for instance the cassette no idea um, so the only thing that doesn't seem to work properly is the aftertouch and to be honest at this point I can't be bothered to look into it so I will pass it on to its next owner uh, to maybe dig in to try and try and get that working if he or she wants it working. So that's it for now. Um, 31 year old synthesizer hopefully well up and running again and hopefully going to a new home where it will be a bit more love than it has been for the last 20 years here um, I will it will be for sale I will leave the current state of the sale on the eBay listing or whatever in the description and update that uh, so uh, on that note it's goodbye from triplicates uh, so as usual subscribe um, leave a comment, uh, thumbs up, goodbye. Okay, so I was editing the video together and looking at the footage and there was something that had confused me, which is this connector now. And the picture I took when I took it apart, excuse me, walking around the camera, this was just through, looped through here like this. However, this is a little four-way connector which comes from just under there. And here, there is a four-way socket. And in addition, we found that the aftertouch, the channel pressure, doesn't work. Could it possibly be that this connector is the channel aftertouch And if we fish this out of here, that's all right. And hopefully we can feed it through here without pulling the main board off. And plug this in. You see that wire? <laughs> it just reaches exactly to that socket. So which way around does this go? Like that. Do we now have channel aftertouch? Okay, so we have synth aftertouch program. So if that doesn't do aftertouch, nothing will. And here we go. And we have aftertouch.
Excellent. And that really is it.